Well, I'd like to welcome you back to my kitchen again. So I'm showing you some of my flowers on my windowsill. Okay, our cooking is over. I'm just kidding, guys. Okay, I got a lot of new things today, so let's get right to it. What I did is I, uh, oh, let's see, let's start here. You know, if you remember these uh, that I had last time, and I know some of you ordered them, you're going to really love them, okay, but sometimes you get tarred with the green and I think the ones that you could order online were kind of a pale blue they work but they're okay well in the meantime guess what I found same ones same cost they're like 10 bucks or so and one of them is over here but uh, the same number of uh, cups and I like these because inside they're labeled like a quarter cup and then a half a cup etc so we're gonna use gonna use these today and let's put the other ones away all right I did order a couple new slicers. This was the old one I had. You, you really like that one. I, I really like it too. But I ordered a new one. And if you look at it, it says the Luncheon Meat Slicer. Perfect Slicers, the EV model. I have no idea what the EV model is, but we're going to open it up. We're going to find out. So I haven't opened it up yet, so it's going to be a surprise to me. Uh, I did order a different color. I ordered yellow. Okay, they had, you know, kind of matches this, I guess. It also matches the... Uh, the lettering on the spam cans. This is whole um, cooking thing this morning is going to be about cooking spam. And today I'm going to use the light spam instead of the heavy spam. All right, let's go over this just a second so it's a little bit clearer. The amount of salt or sodium in this baby here is 790 milligrams if I don't take any out. All right, this one has got, uh, turn it right side up. This has got 570, which is a couple hundred milligrams less of salt, but it's still a lot of salt. We're going to get it out in a minute. But before I begin, let me get, uh, we're going to boil this down the same way as we did, but an extra step we're going to do today, a lot of you were concerned, and so was I, about this amount of salt that's in spam. But equally important is to get the nitrates out. So nitrates don't do you harm also. So there is a way, I did some research on how to get it out, how much we get out, I don't know, but we're going to get some of it out. Uh, and I'll show you that as I'm going along. But uh, right now, let me put this in the tripod. We're going to open this up to see what this new uh, luncheon meat slicer EV is all about. I'll be right back. All right, I think you can see that. This is the old one. I'm going to set this off to the side for a minute while we're looking at the new one. This is I just love this thing. It really makes life so much easier. All right. Uh, by, by the way... By the way, when these come, these here come, they come with a t top on it, like this, a plastic top. It took me forever to get this thing off, so it's, they're not going to go anyplace, and if this is broken, return them. You'll never get this off. I did. I did take a knife to cut it, so you can see right in here. But anyway, this top, we don't need that anymore, but let's open this up and see what we got here. Uh, I'm kind of excited. This I got from Amazon. I'll have a link down below for it. Let's get this out of here like this. Let me take this out. I have no idea what the EV models, what the EV model stands for. I have no, no clue. So sometimes you're driving along the road, you can see EVs, and oh my goodness, I think I know what it is already. Hang on a second, let me get this off here. You know, the EV looks like the regular one, right? But when you turn it over, it's the battery operated one, like cars. That's why they call it an EV. I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> Take the batteries off. Anyway, that's the new EV model of the yellow s slicer. I had to do that. I don't know. It's, I lay awake at night thinking about this dumb, stupid stuff I can bring up on the internet. All right. All right. Let's uh, get my pan out here. Get rid of this. We don't need this right now. I have too much stuff in my kitchen and not enough space, as you probably all know. So I'm going to get my pan. We're going to put it up here, fill it with water, get the spam, the light spam out. Then we're going to boil it, cut it, and then we're going to boil it, bring it to a boil. So I'll be right back. Before I put it in a pan, I just got this out, and I'm going to show you an easy way to do it. Sometimes you're sitting here and you're shaking it, and you're shaking it like this. It's not coming out. Grab the ends here, and then squeeze them together the best you can, and it'll usually pop right out. So, little tip. Just full of tips here, I'm going to tell you. And now we're going to put this in here. Let's slice it up. I usually put a paper towel down. I did wash this before, by the way, and I had a lot of complaints before because last time I set it in like this, and what it did, I think you can see that, is you, the round end 
I had extra round ends. So somebody said, just turn it 90 degrees. So we're going to turn it like that. Clever, huh? Wow. <laughs> okay. So let's do that and see how it does. I must add 100 comments that people said, just rotate your spam 90 degrees in the slicer and you don't have to worry about the round ends. So let's see what we do here. Look at that. The EV model works perfect. And guess what? The ends are, well, there's one piece here just for me. We'll put that over here. Okay, like right there. Let's take it out. Put that in the sink. And now I'm going to set this right there and until I get my pan out. But all the, just the ends are round here instead of over here. So I'll be right back. Yeah, just to keep, just to keep you updated on what's going on here, I sliced the, the spam. I got my hot water. I put the hot water in here and I'm bringing it to a boil. I'm not going to sit and watch it boil because I know I had a lot of complaints last time that my videos were too long. Anyway, it is what it is. So I'm trying to shorten them up and just give you the meat and potatoes of uh, how to make a special Spam today that I think you're going to love. I've had it before and uh, I can't tell you what it is until I start making it. Okay, it's a secret, guys. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, I moved the uh, low sodium Spam over into the boiling water what you need to do is, you, I use a knife, I think the first time I use a chopstick. Anything you got in your hand will do fine, just won't burn yourself, which I uh, like doing all the time. Just split these apart so that the water can be, get between the edges. When they start floating, that means the water, some of the salt has gone from the meat into the, uh, the water itself. And by the way, I think I made an error last time. I said, oh, look at the salt floating on the top. It doesn't. It uh, goes into the water so the stuff that's floating on the top will be fat and grease or whatever comes from the, uh, the spam. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this once for 5 minutes, 15 minutes. I'm not going to record the whole time but 15 minutes. And then I'll be back. I'll take the spam out, empty the water out, put fresh water in and put the spam back in and do repeat the th same thing. Why? Once or twice more because that will help to remove some of the nitrates as well as additional salt. So how much, I know you're going to ask how much salt does it remove, I have no clue. Same thing with the nitrates, but I found out through some, through some research that if you keep boiling it, if you take, keep the water, once you take the Spam out, put it in a pan, and when you get done, you boil the water until there's no more water left and all you have is a powder at the bottom, that's the salt and that will be the nitrates, so I'm told. Now, it'll probably take 10, 15, maybe 20 hours, but I don't think that you guys want to stay with me that long in my kitchen. In fact, I don't even want to do that. So, twice is adequate, and we'll get some of this nitrates out. Those are the only two really harmful things that are in here that they add, salt and nitrates, and that's for preservative, because this stuff lasts, what is it, 2000 and, uh, I'm looking here, uh, 2026. 24 this one is so it's been on the shelf for a couple of years usually it lasts five years Which is good preparatory food especially today with everybody clamping down on the meat and prices going up through the ceiling and by the way I was at um, uh, What was a Sam's Club? Wholesale Club and I saw this stacked up and it's up a dollar I think it was nineteen dollars and some change for I think four pack or six pack and now it's like twenty dollars and change so even the spam is going up so if you're going to buy it I'd buy it now and stock up on it because it's going to be in a while it's going to be gone a few months ago I went in it for almost two months they didn't have any at all this was about three months ago and finally they got a couple uh, uh, shipments in so it's going quickly I know I was in when I was in there the other day they had a stack maybe four feet tall and now it's half that height so people are buying it and probably stocking up on it just a suggestion, if you like it, then do that. If you don't want to, don't do it. Okay, it's up to you. Uh, let me boil this down. I'll take it out, rinse it. I'm going to put it again in with cleaner water. And you can see the stuff floating on the top now. Uh, and then we'll see how much nitrates we get out. You won't be able to taste the nitrates if they go out, though. One other tip, that if you buy a Spam that's flavored like uh, oh, teriyaki Spam or bacon Spam or jalapeno spam. When you do this it'll take the flavor out because they add that flavor in. Of course spam doesn't come with jalapenos in it naturally so they add it in and the nice thing that doesn't bother me because I can add the flavors in I want when I cook it which I'm going to go 
when I go to when I finish all this nonsense. So I'll be right back. Hang in there. Go have a glass of wine or something. I'll be back. Something else I want to bring to your attention as a little tip is when you take the spam out, what I'll do is I'll put it in a strainer and I got this old bucket you can see it's kind of rusted out on the bottom and I just I start pouring cold water in it and then I dip it up and down helps get the salt out and then I take this and I'll set it off the side and I'll put it back in a fresh um, pan of water and we'll be all set. This, the hot water in here, I, what I usually do is I'll, I'll run the cold water on it uh, to warm it up a little before I pour it down the sink. It's not good to put boiling water uh, down your sink. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that's what I use. Nothing fancy, but it just works. Okay? You guys did not remind me, but you're supposed to remind me about this stuff. I said this is supposed to be on for 15 minutes boiling, and I forgot to set my timer. <laughs> so I just set it at seven more minutes. So about another seven minutes, that'll give you enough room for another uh, cup of coffee, maybe, or half a cup of coffee. And you can see it's starting to raise to the surface already, so it won't be too much longer. We want to be careful that we don't break it up in pieces because I have a, a mission for this when I get done with this. So about another seven minutes and I'll be back, change the water and I'll put it on for another 15 minutes. And then uh, we'll start doing my, uh, my thing with my Spam. I think you're going to like this. If you have kids that don't like Spam, this is going to maybe change their mind about it. So talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. I decided to turn on a few minutes earlier my camera that is uh, because I'm sure that you'll want to see me burn myself as I did last time but hopefully I don't do it uh, while I'm taking the spam out and I do have tongs like I think last time I had tongs too but I didn't uh, use them fully in the subsequent handling of my spam I'm going to turn this off it's pretty hot okay I know I could use a bigger pan and just boil it with a strainer, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to set that here. No, I'm going to take it over and out of my sink and put the cold water on it. And just give it a, a rinse bath and I'll be right back. Alright, I uh, took the Spam out, uh, rinsed it off, took the old water out, dumped it in a bowl over here. I put new water in and now I'm going to boil it one more time to get some of the nitrates out and additional salt. So now you could do this as many times as you want to. I think that twice might is probably uh, if you do it twice you should be okay. You know I mean depends on if you really want to if you're real anal about it and you want to get all of it out it's going to take you days to get all the nitrates out. It's not worth it. So I say do it twice maybe three times at the most. I'm going to only do it twice today you know boil a spam just to save some time but if you want to uh, do it 25 times or 30 times it's up to you okay so I'm going to let this come to a boil again we'll take it out dry it off a little bit and then I'm going to slice it and we'll start the cooking this time I'm going to use a Dubouillet pan I said that right a pretty good French huh <laughs> Dubouillet pan well seasoned again it looks like this boy it's heavy and it's a heavier pan if you get a oh let's say like steak I'm like ribeyes and what I do is I'll get this pan real hot. I used to do it in a, a cast iron pan. You get it real hot, dumped it with salt, with uh, what is it, kosher salt on both sides of the steak. Make sure that it's at room temperature. And then put it in there and cover it up for maybe two minutes on the side until it really gets brown. And then I have my, in the meantime, I have my oven at 500 degrees. And once it, maybe a couple minutes on either side and it's nice and brown, I'll take it and shove it right in the oven for five minutes exactly at 500 degrees and when I take it out I'll, I'll drape the steak over a plate so the fat or the oil uh, flows off of it and it's perfect as far as uh, medium rare but maybe I'll do that one of these days I'll make a steak with a carbon steel pan but this is the pan I'm using I like it because there's uh, it's really heavy and the bottom won't warp some of your cheaper carbon steel pans they will this one I've done it before I was a little concerned about the handle because the handle is hold it here I keep beeping myself. Oh, hang on a minute. i got to turn my timer on again. I'm going to put it up to 12 minutes. I've been talking for two already. There you go. But this one's really heavy, well seasoned. And you see the handle is a gray. I think it's like an epoxy color. And then you got this little rubber thing here. And I said, oh. But you could, you could pop that out if you want to, if you want to put it in the oven, if you think it's going to start on fire. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, right there. 
but the handle turned out okay nothing happened to it I left this in nothing happened to it so and I had it in there for 500 degrees it did fine it's a heavy pan really nice and today I'm going to use that pan to uh, make some of my uh, special uh, spam recipe here uh, since I talked to you guys last time I went online I went to Hawaii and Guam and I got a whole probably around two or three hundred different recipes for spam so maybe I should start a website just on cooking with spam but we're gonna throw some at you inter intersprinkled with some of my egg recipes so I'll be back in a few minutes finish up your wine it'll be getting close while my spam is boiling away I'm gonna pour myself a little wine uh, Pinot Grigio just a little bit it helps the cooking go better and I have a question for all you uh, people maybe you could help me um, let's see how can I say this I've had about maybe 3500 comments it's taken me days to answer 90 percent of them I still have a couple hundred I gotta get to yet I answer each comment individually uh, but what I've noticed I have more men that give me a hard time more than the women and maybe somebody could explain to me why men are more critical of cooking shows maybe just not my own but uh, than women are. I have no idea. Maybe it's a guy thing. I don't know. It's a superior attitude or something. Who knows? All men think I guess are their master cooks in the kitchen. Hey, I'm a beginner. I mean, I just have fun at it. And I try different things. A lot of times it flops and other times it doesn't. So what I'm doing, that I'm, I'm drinking some wine today to help me through this uh, in, anticip in anticipation that I'm going to have a lot of negative comments, which I don't mind. I like them all. And so as long as they comment, good or bad, I don't care. You can share this recipe uh, or the method of removing the salt and the nitrates if you want to with your friends. It, uh, it's a good healthy tip for them. So I'll be back in a few minutes and then I'll start telling you uh, what I'm going to uh, put together uh, to make this special type of uh, fried, I guess you fried uh, spam. I'll be back in a couple minutes. All right, I'm going to shut the heat off. My timer went off a couple of minutes ago, and now I'm going to take the spam out and put it back in my little strainer here. Then I'll, I'll cool it down a little bit under the cold water, and then it'll be a little bit easier to handle. Come on. There's one piece hiding here on the other side. Doesn't want to come out. Likes it in the pan. It's like getting kids out of a swimming pool. They don't ever want to come out. Okay, now I'm going to rinse that off and I'll be right back. All right, I got it out and I adjusted my camera a little bit so you can see it. I'm just going to take these slices and I'm going to cut them right down the center. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I do it because I like using knives, I guess. I don't know. There you go. And what I'm going to do again, we're going to use the, uh, let me move my camera over so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to use my doobie. Du bouillet. <laughs> you, I guess you pay more for it when you when it comes in French. But this is well seasoned. I'm going to add just a little bit of oil, but let me heat it up first before I do that. I'll put it on a setting maybe about two, and when it gets warm enough, I'm going to put on about a teaspoon of oil, not a whole bunch, because I want to brown my um, my spam. That's what I'm cooking with today. Da spam. All right. World's famous food. You know what? There's uh, people that hate spam. And there's people that love spam. The ones that love it seem like it brings up memories of their mom and dad made it or their mom made it in the kitchen when they were little or made spam sandwiches or their grandmother would even make it. I mean, it's been out for a long, long time. And I think there's an equal number of people that hate it as there's an equal number of people that love it. So uh, I'm speaking to both the lovers of spam and also trying to convert some of those that are haters to start to eat or at least try it. Try spam with different recipes. Experiment. Live dangerously. Jump off a cliff. No, don't do that. Just try the recipes. I'll be right back. Let me heat this up. Again, my hand goes in to see if it's hot and uh, we'll get, we'll start cooking. I'll show you my secret recipe that I'm, I'm, I'm going to put on it. All right, I just put a, about a teaspoon of oil, not a whole bunch. Uh, I don't want to flood it with it, but I'm also going to use some butter. This time I'm going to use some no salt. I think the last salt I used was the terror, you know that Irish salt? I was answering a lot of comments and I said, there's no salt, I got the no salt version. There is no no salt version. It all has salt in it, so I got some other salt today. This does not have salt in it. 
unsalted I guess they call it. Just put a little bit in there, kind of swish it around. Now I might not do all of these spams today because I'm going to keep it short, but you'll get the idea. Not high enough. I'm going to get a little bit hotter. Then we'll start taking some of the spam and lay in there and I'll keep flipping it over. I'll try to flip it over with, uh, yeah, maybe my flippers or a fork or my fingers I won't use because I got a lot of comments about burning myself last time. And I was only in the ER room for a couple days and they let me out. Just kidding, of course. Okay, I think it's getting good enough there. Let's put this in. Oh, sounds good. Already. You can arrange these any way you want to if you love to get into puzzles. I don't know any of you people into crossword puzzles. But what I really need to know is I want to know why men are more uh, critical of uh, cooking, not only my mo mine, but other, other people. Okay, let's see what I'm going to do here. Let's, uh, I'll move this one over here. There we go. Let me set that for a few minutes. and uh, Let me play with this a little bit. We'll get it brown. I'll turn it over. To get a little brown, then I'll start adding my... Uh, Super sauce on it, okay? I kind of dug around my closet. I found something to uh, to turn them over with. This came from my grandmother's guy. This thing must be 100 years old. I think you still can buy them. It's for eggs, I think. And uh, it's just real light, and it'll do the job. I'll be able to use that maybe in a fork like that, and I can flip them right over without burning myself. Look at that. They're turning brown already. Use whatever you have in the kitchen. Don't go buy something special. Things are too expensive now. Especially if you have to go to the store. It's going to cost you more in gasoline to go to the store than the product will. It's terrible. So, that's why I like, you know, pe some people say, Whoa, I don't have two hours to cook. What else are you going to do? You can't drive around in your car anymore unless you got a lot of bucks. Pay for the gas. Look at that. It's turning nicely brown already. So, and also butter. Oh, butter. I love butter. So so do the French. They put butter on everything. But um, I'm just using, I like, I don't know why I mix it, a little bit of oil, a little bit of butter. It seems like it works better. Maybe it's in my head, but um, that's what I do. All right, now I got the special sauce. Let's start putting it on here. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. If we don't have an, ex if we have an explosion, call 911. <laughs> tell, them, tell them to come and rescue me in the kitchen. I want to make sure you guys can see this. Okay, I did mix some water in it. And it's going to sizzle all over the place. Oh, I forgot to add one thing in this. I'm going to add a little brown sugar because I can. It just doesn't have that many ingredients in here. Let's see what else? Just a little bit. Maybe about, about that much. That's about it. And then, you know what else might go good? Let me show you what's going to go good. But don't, don't give this to your kids. A little bit of wine in there. Let's get adventurous here. Okay, now we'll put this in here over the top of it. By the way, this is marmalade. And I spent some time mixing it together to uh, I don't know how this is going to work out. I did have it. The first time I made this, it really turned out good, but I didn't have as much water. And that might be my downfall. I'm going to just put some straight marmalade on that. Any kind of marmalade. I'm using the orange, the sweet orange marmalade. It really tastes good though. Let's see, how can I do this? Uh, all right, it's going to get real messy. This is what you're, it's going to go is, you, is there's no uh, pre playing this video. It is what you see, it's live. <laughs> so this will go down. I need to get more in there just to get a heavier syrup and a sauce in there. This is really, it really tastes good. It, does, it sounds goofy. It's like a few years ago, I, I used to make a lot of scrambled eggs and I came up with peanut butter scrambled eggs. Sounds awful, but I'll tell you, it's really good. One, maybe one of these days I'll make that. Peanut butter scrambled eggs. Oh my God, what a combination. Okay, now if you're a diabetic, I don't want to hear a word from you guys. This is just purely an experiment. I got a lot of other recipes. This one, I've just used it. I'm not going to put any more in there than that. All right, let's put the cap on this so it doesn't run away. I love marmalade, by the way. And if you eat this for breakfast, you don't have to put marmalade on your toast. Just drink to that. If this recipe seems a little wild, it's because of the alcohol, not because of me. 
I might as well throw the rest of this in here. Okay. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit. I think I can start turning that over. I have no idea how this is going to turn out, but I think it's going to be okay. I think the first time I did this, I didn't put any water uh, or wine in the uh, marmalade. I just put it on, and what it did is it candied it on the bottom, which was really nice. Now you can base this too if you want, which I'm going to do here in a minute. I probably should have browned them a little bit more, and I'm sure I'm going to hear comments about that. And that's okay. You guys are here to help me. All right, let's get some of this over the top. Oh, does that smell good? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. <laughs> we'll get it right. Yeah. Have another drink, Bob. Thank you. All right. I have no idea. I know it's going to turn out good. Can you smell it yet? Oh, it's hot on the fingers when you get close to it, for sure. You know what I'm going to do next time? I got some um, spam left. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this out. It's done. I'm going to put the other in, but I'm not going to put water with the marmalade. Just try that, and we'll see what the difference is. How about that? All right, I'm going to leave that go for a few minutes, and I'll be back. Go get a gla another glass of wine or coffee and uh, relax. It's looking better. Now, here's, I have an idea what I'm going to do. You, do, you can make this. I, I tasted a couple of pieces because you see two pieces are missing, and it's really, really good. But what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to take the Spam out, and then I'm going to uh, take the Fluid out, and I'm going to put that in a special dish. I'll put the other Spam in with no nothing in it at the, until I get it nice and brown and crispy. I like my Spam a little crispier, uh, brown on, on both sides, and this won't do it, but it, this is really delicious, I'll tell you. So let me uh, stop the video. I'm going to take the Spam out. I'll remove the sauce, and I'll put it in here, right there, and I'll set it off to the side, and slowly, slowly but surely, I'll add it back in once I get it really browned. So let's try that and see what happens. This is an experiment for me, too. Okay, so I'll be right back. I just, what I just did is I took the Spam out and I put it in my Pyrex dishes. I'll leave a link uh, down below for these dishes. I like square or, or rectangular dishes. I don't like round dishes because I have not seen, found a round refrigerator yet to stick them in. Why they make round dishes to put food in, I have no clue. But let me empty this out and I'll be right back. Alright, I emptied it out and now I, there's uh, just a little bit of the remains in there from before. But most of it I have in this dish here. Make sure if you do that, you put it in a dish that won't explode on you. And I'm going to get those brown before I do anything else, and I'll uh, just, just see how that works out. Okay, be back. When you don't put any oil or butter in, it doesn't take long for them to brown. You can see this already. It's only been in there maybe for 30 seconds or so. And they're browning up really nicely, so I'm just going to leave them like that. I might flip them over a couple times. You notice I'm not burning my fingers yet. It's turning out nice, nice, nice. I'll leave that there. I got my temperature is about 60% for six out of uh, how many? Out of ten. From one to six, I'm about a little over halfway because I want it, the pan to get nice and hot. And I'm running short on wine here. It's going to help me cook. I'll be right back. While I was in the refrigerator digging my wine out, I, I came across this uh, the box of Kerrygold. That's what I used last time. And I said it doesn't have any salt, no salt. It is. It's got salt in it. In fact, it's got, or sodium, 100 milligrams per one tablespoon, I believe, which is 14 grams. So there's a little bit of salt in it. I, I like it because it's got more fat in it. It just tastes so much better. I, I just love butter. It's getting time to, uh, I got my wine now. So it's time to flip these over one more time. Oh, yeah, they're starting to look really nice now. And then I can start adding the sauce in them a little bit at a time. I want to get this these sides a little more brown like that. Carbon steel pans are really great for browning. It's much better than uh, stainless steel. And we can have that discussion a little later on. But let's see if, how, how I can make a bad meal turn out good. 
I don't think any of you have ever made a bad meal, right? If you have, please list it below the worst meal that you've ever made that you thought would turn out great. Usually it happens in the first or maybe the second recipe. It's starting to smoke a little bit, so let me start putting the sauce on a little. Oh boy, this is going to be something else. If I would just put that in there. This is starting to hard already because it's, I think there's a lot of sugar in it or, or, or caramelization in it. Let me just put this in there best we can. I'm going to kind of smoosh it around. That's a Gordon Ramsay culinary technique. Smoosh. I'm going to smoosh it around. I just don't like to waste food, so we'll make something out of this. Anybody got any recommendations or ideas I could do this better? Let me know. I'm sure that you will. Thank God I have a lot of people that defend me. <laughs> Otherwise, I might jump off my roof. Okay. Oh, over here. One more little. I'm going to soak this in the, refriger in the refrigerator. Let's have some more wine, right? I'm going to soak this in the sink. And I want to turn these over so that we get the candy miss on all sides. Okay. Nice and brown, for sure. I could throw some butter in there, too. Okay. The back side gets always hotter, probably because there's no ventilation in the back side of the stove. Yeah, let me put some butter in here just for the heck of it. Like I said, this is an experiment. Even if you goof it up, it tastes good. All right, let's get some butter on here. Whoops. Oh. My knife is really hot. I'm making a mess in my kitchen. I'll be sleeping in the garage again tonight. I can see that. Okay. More butter. Yes, more butter. Doesn't that smell good? Oh, God, it smells delicious. Look at the butter. Just swimming in butter. Oh, the French would love me. Oh, j'ai envie de toi, chérie. Oh boy, oh boy, this looks good. Let's flip this over now. Get some of that nice, moist, gooey, greasy butter on there. It tastes great. <laughs> That'll teach me to drink wine. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my God. I bet you it tastes better than it even looks. Sometimes your mistakes turn out to be the best meals ever. Look at that. A oh. couple more minutes and it's done. I better put the top back on the butter. All right, I think I'm going to turn the heat down to uh, off and just let it sit there for a minute. I'll tell you what I used. It's a Dubouillet pan. I think this is about a 10 or 11 inch pan carbon steel pan. There's a lot of, I'll put a link down below if you like them. Uh, I use these uh, containers to stick my, my um, yeah, what are we cooking today? Spam in. They all seem to fit just perfectly. Be careful, they get real hot in the bottom here when, when you put it, first put it in. They store real nice in the refrigerator. I use a little bit of, let's see, what is this called? Brown sugar. <laughs> just a little bit, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. I put a little splash of white wine, Pinot Grigio, in it. And of course, I used uh, the, you don't have to get real expensive stuff. This is uh, sweet orange marmalade. I get it from Aldi's. And butter, just regular butter. The wine I was drinking was a Charles Schwab. They call it Two Buck Chuck. It from, comes from Trader Joe's. I only buy a few things there. Uh, too expensive for me. I don't need it anyway. So this is, really looks good, doesn't it? Oh. Let me taste one. I gotta do that right now. Oh my god, I'm gonna take uh, which one? Any, mini, miny, mo. Just take this one here. Let me cut this open and see what it looks like. What's this like? Oh man. I may need a steak knife. The sugar's holding it together. My fork is uh, got a lot of. I'm just gonna take a bite out of it. There you go. Oh. Is that good? Mm. 
Oh man. That is so good. You gotta try this. You don't have to goof it up like I did. But if you want to make this, what I would do, I'm gonna turn it off now, is uh make it the second way. Brown your uh, spam first. That's what I'm cooking with spam today. Brown your spam first. Too much wine, Bob. And then uh, let it get nice and brown. Then add your marmalade over the top of it. Now make sure you use a little butter to give it that nice glazed effect. And it's going to be like heaven. It gives a new definition to spam. Now what I'm going to do, dry my fingers off here. I'm going to put the spam, start taking it out, put it in my container. There we go. Look at that. Oh. This will last me a week because I only eat like one piece with one egg in the morning. Maybe two pieces, depending how good it is. Look at that. Oh, man. Now, before what I did, when I made the um, teriyaki spam, I poured the remaining amount that's in the pan over the top of the ter over the dish here. But today I'm not. There's enough sugar in it already, so I'm just going to get rid of this and we'll be all set. So, let me recap real quickly. I used uh, no low salt spam. You can use either kind. I boiled it twice for 15 minutes each. The first time takes most of the salt out. How much, I have no idea. But I boiled it a second time. Uh, and you could do it three, four, five times if you want to take additional nitrates out. And it does taste totally different when, when you boil it the second time. Um, I mixed so, a mixture of water, a little bit of wine, and just a touch of brown sugar with my marmalade ahead of time. Kind of squish it up because it comes out kind of uh, gel gelatinized out of the out of the jar. When you, when you take this out, it's like gelatin. So you got to kind of mix it up so the, it, it kind of flows around. And then uh, use a pan, put just a little bit of oil on it, maybe a teaspoon, a little bit of butter. Then fry your, uh, or none, don't put any in and just put your spam in to brown it and then add your solution after that. And I think you're going to really like that. Give it a try and uh, spread this word around. Give it to other people if they like spam. Leave your comments below, I'm sure you will. Come on guys, you can leave some good comments as well as the bad ones, but either way, I'll answer every one of them personally. Okay, and I do that, it takes me days and hours, but I like doing it. So, uh, enjoy, and uh, thanks for stopping into my kitchen today. It shows you that uh, nothing ever goes perfect in a kitchen, and I'm sure it won't in yours either, but that's okay, that's life. We'll talk to you later, thanks for stopping by, bye-bye.